One of the biggest challenges in restoration is dealing with grasses. Uh, when you start with a forest and you slowly uh, transition it into, let's say, coffee or other crops, eventually the soil degrades to such an extent that it ends up being potrero or pasture. Uh, low quality grass lands or grassy fields are the bottom of the barrel in places like Latin America and Colombia where we are. Uh, how do you then take this degraded land with low quality invasive grasses from other parts of the world and transition that back into uh, productive forests? Well, I have a couple of strategies for you here. Um, we do not use Roundup or any other poisons and so all of these strategies are going to be organic and they're going to be natural. But that also means we're going to be using time as our ally. Uh, but one thing I want to mention about Roundup is that Roundup doesn't work very well either. It will kill the grass, but the grass comes right back. Uh, frankly, I don't see much difference between chopping down the grass and poisoning the grass. Uh, to me, it, maybe it's a few days but it hasn't seemed very noticeably to me. I have some uh, neighbors that choose to use poisons, uh, and so I have observed. Is, is there some sort of uh, benefit to using poison over a guaraña or a weed whacker? And really, to me, it hasn't been uh, anything very noticeable. So we've recently chopped down all this grass, and we're letting it dry out on top. It, again, it's a dry season right now. And so we're letting it dry out. Eventually we will roll it up into this uh, contour here. If you want to take a look, we've got another youngish contour. Uh, and behind us, we have the first strategy. So let's go check out this area behind us. The first strategy for dealing with grass is shade, especially the bracharia grasses, but really all of these grasses are very strong, very hardy, for direct sunlight. Now you'll notice that these this grass has not been recently cut down and it's because when we got here to clean up it isn't even long enough yet. It's much slower and it's much it's much more spread out. There's a lot of uh, patches that haven't even been covered. It's like the grass feels like it has a responsibility to cover the ground and when there's enough shade it doesn't necessarily come together. It it just kind of comes out slowly in its little patches. Now, this little uh, forested area is full of trees. Uh, we have guamo, ice cream bean trees, and tricantea, gigantea. But we've also allowed some of the native pioneer species, like this espadero tree, to grow. And together, they provided a canopy. And that shade has dramatically weakened the strength of the grass. And so, we don't really feel, and also allowed other native species space, like this amor seco, which is a nitrogen fixing uh, vinish uh, herb. Uh, herb. And uh, so we, we have the native species coming back, being able to compete with the grass because the shade is here. In direct sunlight, nothing else can compete with the grass. It comes out with such strength and ferocity. And so now I want to go and. Uh, show you guys how uh, we kind of naturally let shade develop and then show you one more strategy we use naturally to get the grass to go away. So how do you get shade? Well, you let the native pioneer species go. These can even provide a little bit of shade for your cuttings or your tree plantings. Uh, generally chopping these down to plant higher value trees will lead to your trees struggling. And so we have native bushes here that we've just allowed. We've obviously come through and cleaned up the grass, but we've allowed these species to stay here because they are naturally creating shade that's gonna help weaken the grass. And they'll keep growing taller and participating in the system. Uh, some are more higher value than others. Generally the bushes can be pruned and they'll stay alive, uh, but eventually if you don't prune, they'll die off. Uh, but they just create biomass, they're, uh, you know, incorporating themselves in the system. Uh, the next strategy we have, now there's some areas where 
Yeah, the grass is, has become so invasive, there's no shade anywhere, and even to get pioneer species, you need to do something to weaken the grass. And for that, we have this strategy right over here, which is to use uh, these pieces of black plastic. We found that 22 to 30 days is plenty, and what actually happens is the roots of the grass start to rot and the grass does not come back after almost a month or about a month of no sunlight. And so actually, we can come around here and see a few patches where there is some pioneer species starting to appear. Here is where I brought the grass, from, uh, the plastic from, and you see this, this is all now rotted, uh, rotted grass roots, and they'll rot, and here as well we had it, and now what I have actually is some native species appearing. This native species, it actually, it's a beautiful little flower, sprouts from a bulb. But generally when the grass was here, it was too weak and too slow to appear. The grass would cover it up immediately. But now it's sensed, it's in the seed bank, and it's sensed that its opportunity to sprout has come, and it will slowly, this area, which looks dead, will slowly appear with these native pioneer species, some of them even nitrogen fixing. And the grass doesn't come back. So you can rotate a single piece. We have about five pieces of this black plastic. We're rotating around the farm and slowly um, reducing the spread of these invasive grasses. And so these are our strategies, uh, shade, uh, you can even use a plastic, and generally supporting the native pioneer species, getting to know them, accepting their help into your system, that we recommend instead of poisons, which of course kill off the viability of the soil microorganisms uh, that are contributing to your fertility. See you next time.